Number 1. Pressure changes cause breathing. Gases are moved in and out of the lungs. However, in order to understand how this is possible, it is important to review a basic concept from physics known as the pressure-volume relationship. If a certain number of gas molecules are held in a container, there is always a certain amount of pressure on the gas molecules from the container. If the volume of the chamber decreases, the same number of gas molecules will now be under greater pressure and be forced to move more closely to each other. However, if the volume of the container increases, the same number of molecules now have less pressure exerted on them by the container, as there is more room for the molecules to move around. Thus, the pressure on the gas molecules in a container is determined by the volume, or how large the container is. The larger the volume, the less pressure on the gas molecules, and the smaller the volume of the container, the greater the pressure on the gas molecules will be. Thus, in the pressure-volume relationship, as volume increases, pressure decreases. As volume decreases, pressure increases. This is how air is brought into and out of the lungs. A combination of gases in the air makes up atmospheric air. The pressure on the gases in the atmosphere is referred to as atmospheric pressure. So how does air get transported from the atmosphere into the lungs? To answer this question, it is important to examine the formula for airflow. Airflow equals delta pressure over resistance. The formula for airflow is the same as the formula for blood flow. Air flows from areas of higher pressure to areas of lower pressure. At the onset of breathing, the diaphragm contracts, which pulls the lungs down, and the chest expands, which pulls the lungs outward. By pulling the lungs both in downward and outward directions, it increases the volume in the lungs. This decreases the pressure in the lungs. The pressure in the lungs is now lower than atmospheric pressure. Since air flows from higher pressure to lower pressure, the air will now flow from the atmosphere into the lungs. So how is air moved out of the lungs in exhalation? As the diaphragm relaxes, it moves in an upward direction, and the chest recoils back to a smaller size, both of which push on the lungs, decreasing the volume in the lungs. This decrease in volume increases the pressure in the lungs. Air will now flow from the lungs into the atmosphere where there is lower pressure. The diaphragm and muscles surrounding the chest cavity are able to expand and constrict the lungs, causing pressure decreases and increases within the lungs. Air flows into the lungs during a decrease in pressure and out of the lungs during an increase in pressure. Number 2. Gas exchange is the function of the lungs. The lungs have the ability to regulate the gases in the blood through gas exchange. The bronchioles in the lungs bring air into the alveoli, the singular of which is pronounced alveolus. The alveoli are the portion of the lungs where gas exchange occurs. All alveoli are surrounded by capillaries. As air fills the alveoli from the bronchioles, the alveoli expand, exposing the blood in the capillaries to the gases in the alveoli. At this point, gas exchange can occur. Due to concentration differences of the gases in the alveoli and gases in the blood, diffusion of gases drives gas exchange. Oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the blood, and carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the alveoli. However, the lungs are far overbuilt to do their job, and the human body contains much more lung tissue than is actually needed for life. Thus, some alveoli are not ventilated, meaning they do not receive an air supply, and the alveoli collapse. Blood flow is diverted from these collapsed alveoli and this region of the lung is basically unused. During exercise, the demand for gas exchange increases, the contracting skeletal muscle consumes more oxygen and produces more carbon dioxide than at rest. To meet this demand, the number of active alveoli is increased. At the onset of exercise, there is an increase in both respiratory rate and heart rate, meaning both blood flow and airflow increase. Why is this important? Imagine if only respiratory rate increased, yet heart rate remained the same. The increased ventilation would bring more oxygen into the lungs and inflate more collapsed alveoli. However, there would be no blood for this oxygen to diffuse into. Therefore, while there was an increase in oxygen uptake by the lungs, it would be completely ineffective without a corresponding increase in blood flow to receive the oxygen from the lungs. Similarly, if blood flow to the lungs increased to remove carbon dioxide from the blood without an increase to ventilation, the blood would simply circulate through the lungs with no increase in available alveoli to release the carbon dioxide into. This is why it is important that in the lungs, an increase in blood supply to alveoli is matched with an increase in air supply to the alveoli. Put another way, when blood begins to perfuse the alveoli, 
The lungs also need to ventilate the alveoli if gas exchange is to occur. This is the basis for the ventilation perfusion ratio, V over Q. The ventilation perfusion ratio is a measure of air supply and blood supply to the alveoli. When additional alveoli are activated during exercise, the body works to ensure that the newly recruited alveoli are at a ventilation perfusion ratio as close to 1 as possible. A ventilation perfusion ratio below 1 means there is more blood flow than airflow, and a ventilation perfusion ratio greater than 1 means there is more airflow than blood flow. The ventilation perfusion ratio is regulated through dilation or constriction of the bronchioles and pulmonary arterioles. Bronchioles and arterioles have a layer of smooth muscle. When the smooth muscle constricts, it reduces flow, and when it dilates, it increases flow. For example, the bronchioles dilate in response to an increase in carbon dioxide in the lungs. Since carbon dioxide is brought to the lungs by the blood, an increase in carbon dioxide concentration in the lungs is a sign of an increase in blood flow in the alveoli. To match the increase in blood flow, the lungs respond with bronchodilation, increasing airflow. Increasing airflow to match the increased blood flow brings the ventilation perfusion ratio as close to 1 as possible, maximizing gas exchange. Similarly, blood vessels can reduce perfusion in response to low ventilation. When ventilation rate is low, the ability of an alveolus to oxygenate the blood is low. Low oxygen levels in the blood cause vasoconstriction in pulmonary arterioles. This reduces blood flow to an alveolus where ventilation is low, bringing the ventilation perfusion ratio at that alveolus closer to 1, so that a large amount of blood is not sent to an alveolus with a low amount of oxygen. By vasoconstricting, much of the blood from the arteriole is diverted to other alveoli. Thus, gas exchange can be maximized by the bronchioles and arterioles responding to the concentration of gases in them, and altering the ventilation and perfusion accordingly. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel.